Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tori and today we are working in my October daily album for 2024 on story number nine. I am actually going to be doing some coloring with alcohol markers. I have the Ohuhu Honolulu alcohol markers that I purchased from Amazon last year I believe um, and I will link those below if you're interested in checking them out and today I'm going to be documenting some fall baking so I've got two pictures here one of some everything bagels that I've been making for a couple of years now and then another of like these pumpkin apple things um, I don't actually remember what they're specifically called but I've made them last year and this year and they're super tasty the spider paper I just showed is a Tracy Reed Designs printable and then this kind of circle-y burst paper is an Allie Edwards paper. Uh, those are going to be the primary elements of my page today and this is kind of my idea for how I want to have this page laid out and then I have quite a few other things also pulled out. So I have this little like fall die cut pumpkin situation happening here. And I had actually created this with the Spellbinders Stamp and Die of the Month from September of 2023, the Fall Thoughtfulness Stamp and Die set of the month. I was making a card and had cut this out and didn't end up using it. So I just put it aside and I figured I could use it for my spread today. I will also be using the Paper Person Shop Stamp. I think it's called homemade I'm not hundred percent sure the name of that one but I will link it below if it's available I have my story number stickers and then I also have these tiny letters these like typewriter dies from Sizzix a Tim Holtz version and then a scrap from my story number eight story of the pink paper that I used um, as my matte paper for that spread as well so there's a lot of stuff going on with this page today. Honestly, at the end of it, it feels like it looks a lot simpler than all of the effort that went into it. So I'm going to start by coloring this pumpkin and it does take me quite a bit of time uh, because I tend to color very, very slowly when it comes to alcohol markers. Um, I don't know why, but for some reason I just color so slowly with them. So I'm just swatching out a couple of these markers here to find a blend of markers that I really like. I'm not going to be doing any type of like crazy blending with the alcohol markers. I'm just going to do like solid coloring and then add a teeny tiny bit of shading to the pumpkin towards the end of my coloring here. But everything else is just a solid color. Now I will say that my focus on my camera was focusing on the tips of the markers. I'm guessing because I had the actual markers in the top left hand portion of the video. Uh, so my focus is a little bit iffy for the first part of this coloring, but I will end up zooming in to get a little bit closer and um, everything should kind of straighten out once we zoom in and you can't really see the markers on the top left hand corner of the screen anymore. So I'm just, like I said, coloring and I color very slowly with these. I find it easiest to keep my alcohol markers from going outside of the lines by coloring towards myself. And primarily, um, as I'm coloring, you'll notice that a lot of the strokes that I'm doing, I'm pulling the marker towards myself instead of pushing it away from myself. I think it's easier for me to have like a lighter hand pulling it towards myself and when I push away I tend to push heavier if that makes sense. I also have like a very heavy hold on any type of writing utensil um, so pulling it towards myself makes it easier for me to not go out of the lines. I am also popping up the little like marker caps here with the color that I'm using and I will also show all of the final markers towards the end of my coloring as well. So while I am coloring this, I will let you listen to just a little bit of spooky music and we will hop back into the voiceover once the coloring portion is finished.
So we are done with all of the coloring and this is what the final little pumpkin is going to end up looking like. I am gonna go ahead and kind of dry place this out to make sure that I actually do like it against my photos. Now, if I had been smart, I probably would have incorporated a little bit of pink tones within my pumpkin coloring as well to kind of bring in those peachy and pink tones from my actual papers that I'll be using. But I didn't do that. And yeah, that's just not happening, I guess. <laughs> um, but in hindsight, that would have been probably a good idea for me to do. I am pulling out these little dies and these dies are so, so small. I think, I can't even tell you how many there are in here. I think it's like over a hundred or something. Um, and there's multiple of each letter. So I am going to pull out just a huge chunk of the dies. And then I'm gonna pull out each individual letter to spell out fall baking and get all of those laid out on my paper here. Like I said, there is a ton of dies, which makes it super easy for finding all of the letters for the words that I'm trying to spell without needing to make multiple cuts. So I do appreciate that, but I can definitely foresee myself in the future probably losing some of these. So I guess it's a good thing that there's going to be multiple of each letter. So I'm just getting these laid out here on this pink dotted paper. And then I will run that through my little mini Sizzix sidekick die cutting machine that I keep next to my desk and get that all pulled out. So the dies themselves are very small and then the letters, once they're actually die cut out, are even smaller. So I'm definitely going to need to pull out my little like pickup tools and my poker tools to actually get A, the paper out of the dies and then pick some of these smaller pieces of paper up. Now, unfortunately, the paper that I used is so light that it blends in quite closely to my actual desk. So I'm not sure that you'll really even be able to see all of the little dies that are sitting on my desk right now. But I will also zoom in before I actually get those placed on my paper so you can see how that comes together as we get closer to that portion of the video. Before I actually place all my dies down, I do move along to getting some of my papers and photos adhered back to my background paper. Um, just because I wasn't 100% sure specifically where I wanted the die cut title to, to rest on my paper. So I'm just gonna move along and work on something else until I can really decide how I want that to look. So I'm going to put this spider web, pa spider web paper down. And when I had originally thought this out, my idea was to turn the circle into just an arch shape. And it worked out exactly as I was hoping it would have. And then I will layer my photos on top of this spider web paper as I'm showing you right here. I will also end up turning both of these photos into little pockets. That way I can write specifically about the dish that I made for each photo. I don't know if I'm going to try and put like the recipe information or just like how we feel about that recipe as a family or what have you yet because I'm not doing any of the journaling on camera here, but I will be turning these into little pockets so I can tuck journaling behind the photos as well. I am just using some 1 8 inch score tape to go around three sides of each of my photos. I will also off camera, punch a little half circle out of the side of each of the photos as well to kind of give a little like entry point for my little black tag thingies that I will be adding in a little bit later on. Unfortunately, um, my camera had like overheated or something so I didn't have that portion of it on camera but I do just use a circle punch and punch out little half circles from each of the photos as like that little kind of pocket piece thing. <laughs> so I'm getting this first one taped down and then I will start the process of putting some tape on the Everything Bagels photo. This is seriously one of my favorite recipes to make. I've made these bagels so many times. There's like only four or five ingredients in the actual recipe itself. 
And every part, everybody that I've I've taken one of these bagels to that's tried them has loved it. So I will link the recipe that I used for those bagels down below if you also like homemade bagels because they're fantastic. So we're back now and you can see that my area has changed just a little bit because like I said, my camera had overheated and we needed to kind of restart. Um, I am going to go ahead and get that second photo laid down. And I'm using my Simon Says Stamp T Square Ruler, T Ruler, Square Ruler. I'm, I'm not, I don't remember what these are called. Uh, I'm using that though to try and make sure that my top photo is as straight as possible or as even as possible to my bottom photo. I didn't do that with my bottom photo, but I felt like my eye leveling of it was fairly decent and I wanted the top one to match that one as close as possible so I'm just going to use this little t-square ruler in order to get this one adhered down. Once I've got this photo placed down then we are going to go ahead and place the pumpkin alcohol colored die cut um, right in the middle of these two photos. So I have already placed a bunch of little foam squares on this die cut and let me tell you I wish I had just used like some foam tape because this was a pain uh, to get all of these little backers off but eventually I get there and I will just place that like I said in between the two photos and it creates kind of like a nice little divider and I just really like the way that this looks. I think the colors that I chose for the pumpkins and the plants really match the photos but like I said, I wish I had kind of put a little bit of pink or peachy colors in here as well, just to bring in those colors from the background papers to the actual coloring too. So I am now going to pull out some of these like little black business shape, car business card shape papers. I got these probably like three years ago and I don't think I have ever used to them. So I found them recently and figured maybe I could use them or incorporate them with my October daily project. And that's what I'm doing. And I also feel like this black popping out from behind the photos kind of helps ground the spread as well, the page, because I don't really have that much black in this page at all, with the exception of what my story number would have been. And that would have been, I think, the only actual black that I added. So I think that having these little cards is going to be super helpful for bringing those together and kind of grounding my layout as well. I'm using that T-square ruler just to draw two lines because I am going to use those two lines to actually place down my die cut title to keep it as straight as possible. And to make it a little bit easier on myself, I am just kind of dry placing all of those little tiny letters specifically where I'm wanting them to go. That way I can just pull them up one at a time and then place them back down. And like I said, we will zoom in here to get a close up of these because these are so tiny. I think it makes it really difficult to see them when the camera's a little bit further away. I will be using my Barely Arts liquid glue to glue down these little die cut letters. And that's really going to be the next couple of minutes of this video is me just adhering this title down. This titles like this are, they're a process and they do take a decent amount of time, I feel like, but I always love the end result. I think it looks so nice. So I'm really happy that I actually chose to do this for my title. I feel like it fits really well with like what the spread is actually about. And I really like these typewriter alphabet dies because typewriter alphabet, like if you're typing on a typewriter, it's never going to be perfect anyways. So using the typewriter dies kind of alleviates the necessity for something to be placed perfectly for me. So I can kind of have things be a little bit skewed or off kiltered or whatever and not be as bothered by it as I would be if it was like a sans serif or something like that. So, and that's honestly why typewriter just alphas in general are usually my favorite alphas because they eliminate that need for perfection for me. 
So I just have a few more letters here to get glued down and then I will move right along. I just have the N and the G and it will just be another moment or so before we are moving on. Once I get these letters adhered down, I will just pull out my story number sticker and I did this a little bit off camera because I was so zoomed in and briefly forgot that I was zoomed in. So you won't see that one like all the way on camera um, when I go and pull that in but uh, you will see it as I zoom out how that looks out I'm just going to be placing that towards the bottom of this little arch that I made I'm taking out that little card so that I can line it up with the photo to try and get it to look as straight as possible at least as straight as I can get it to look just eyeing it I guess and then I'll put that back in and we will zoom out to kind of move right along I really, really wanted to use that Baking Spirits Bright stamp set from the paper person shop, um, but I was struggling in kind of figuring out how I wanted to use it. I wanted to use it because it is about baking and that's what this spread is about, but it is a Christmas stamp set. Um, it has a lot of Christmas sentiments and stuff on it. So I decided to pull off the homemade stamp and I'm actually going to cover a portion of it with a piece of mint tape from scrapbook.com. So I'm just going to cover the side of that so that I only get home um, inked up first and I'm going to stamp that down and then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other half of the stamp so that I can stamp made underneath the home because obviously homemade is not going to be fitting fully on the little white area that I have left. So I just decided to kind of stamp them on top of each other, but a little bit kind of off to the side. I'm also going to be overlapping ever so slightly the M and the A on top of the M and the E for home, uh, just because I didn't want to overlap into my actual story number. And I, I was much more willing to overlap the stamping instead of the actual story number. The last thing that I'm going to do on this particular page is I'm actually going to add some little like dots, like sparkly dots. These are from Pinkfresh Studio and I'm going to just glue them down. I was shocked when I watched this video back and realized that I didn't actually like dry place any of these before I started gluing. I just started throwing glue on my paper and just putting things down. So. That's very unlike me for these types of things, so wow. <laughs> uh, but I will add four of those around my title and my secondary title and my story number and all that just to add a little bit of additional sparkle. Um, I really liked these dots um, because they matched so well with the photos and the titling. Um, they're just, I love them. And they're so sparkly and so cute. So that's the last thing that I'm going to be doing, I believe, is just placing down these little jewel dots and then we will be done with this spread. This last one here, I actually am trying to figure out specifically where I want it to go. Uh, so I was taking a little bit of a minute to decide where I wanted to put that and I'm ultimately going to decide that I want to place it right there next to the E and home where I just had it and I will get that adhered down. I would love to know, have you done any fall baking this year so far? And if you have, do you have a favorite fall recipe? I love trying and baking seasonally appropriate things. It's just so fun to me. So um, obviously I would love to hear if you have a favorite recipe. Well, let's see here. I'm just gonna get this glued down and then that's all I have for this page today. I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let me know, like I said, if you've got any favorite fall recipes. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.